Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to tell you about twin pregnancies, what leads to it, the different kinds of twins, and possible complications. We'll learn this topic by solving questions so that you get a better understanding of it. If you're interested in medical videos, quizzes, Q&A sessions with doctors, and many other things related to medicine, do subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram. In pregnancies with no twinning, one sperm combines with one egg and gives rise to a zygote. This process is known as fertilization. The zygote grows to give rise to a morula, which then forms the blastocyst and gets implanted. The blastocyst forms the amniotic cavity and the chorionic cavity, which is collectively known as the embryonic disc. This ultimately forms the fetus. The fetus is enclosed in an amniotic sac. It receives nutrition, oxygen and exchanges waste with its mother through the placenta. A little change in any of these steps can give rise to twins. But why are some twins identical while some aren't? Let's find out. Question number one. Fraternal twins are option A, monozygotic, option B, dizygotic. The answer to this question is dizygotic. Twins can either be identical or non-identical. Fraternal twins are non-identical. So, they have different sets of chromosomes. Since the sperm and egg contribute to the chromosomes of the fetus, fraternal twins are formed when there are two separate fertilizations. Twin 1 is formed by this fertilization and twin 2 is formed by this one. All the other steps are the same. These two twins will have their own placenta and their own amniotic sac. Twins which are formed by the same fertilization are identical since they are formed by the same sperm and the same egg. There are different kinds of identical twins which we'll address in the next question. Question number 2. Cleavage would have taken place earlier in which of the following pregnancies? Option A. Monochorionic diamniotic Option B. Monochorionic monoamniotic Option C. Dichorionic diamniotic Option D. It takes place at the same time in all twins. The answer to this question is dichorionic diamniotic. Let's first understand these terms. Chorionic refers to the number of placentas and amniotic refers to the number of amniotic sacs. Twins which share one placenta and one amniotic sac are monochorionic, monoamniotic. Some twins might share one placenta but might still have two separate amniotic sacs. These are monochorionic, diamniotic. Finally, twins which don't share any of it and have one placenta and one amniotic sac each are known as dichorionic, diamniotic twins. So, what determines this whole chorionic, amniotic, sharing, not sharing is the cleavage. Cleavage refers to the splitting of one zygote into two separate parts. This can happen in any of these stages. What I want you to remember is that earlier the splitting, lesser the sharing. If the splitting takes place at a later stage, the twins will end up sharing more parts. Let's see how. If cleavage takes place at the two cell stage, there will be two morula and two blastocysts formed. These will go ahead to get implanted. There will be two placentas and two amniotic sacs, one for each baby. So this is dichorionic diamniotic. Now, if cleavage takes place at the morula stage, the twins will share one placenta but will still get to have their own amniotic sac. This makes it monochorionic diamniotic. If the cleavage takes place at the blastocyst stage, the twins will have just one placenta and one amniotic sac, making it monochorionic monoamniotic. Conjoined twins are formed when the cleavage takes place after the formation of the embryonic disc. So, twins that split early are more independent. Question number three. Twin-twin transfusion syndrome is likely to occur in twins with which of the following findings on ultrasound? Option A, T sign. Option B, lambda sign. The answer to this question is T sign. 
There are two important parts to this question. Let's take it one by one. Twin twin transfusion syndrome is a condition where there's an imbalance in the supply of blood to the twins. One twin receives a lot of blood while the other twin receives very less blood. This is rare in dichorionic pregnancies because the placentas are separate, hence the blood supply is also separate. In monochorionic pregnancies, the twins share a placenta. So, a poor distribution of blood due to anastomosis can result in the shunting of blood from one baby to another. This means blood from one baby will be transfused into the other baby. The baby that's receiving blood is the recipient, while the baby from which blood is taken away is the donor twin. So, twin twin transfusion syndrome is more likely in monochorionic pregnancies. Having understood that, let's take a look at the T and lambda signs. In dichorionic pregnancies, there are two separate placentas, so this whole part looks like a lambda. In monochorionic pregnancies, this part isn't too deep, which makes it look like the alphabet T. This is the T sign. Hence, twin twin transfusion syndrome is more likely to be seen in pregnancies characterized by a T sign on ultrasound. Question number four. In twin twin transfusion syndrome, which twin is likely to do better? Option A, smaller. Option B, larger. The answer to this question is smaller. The twin that is donating blood will have very less fluid and nutrition. This leads to growth retardation, anemia, and oligohydramnios. On the other hand, the twin that is receiving a lot of blood will have polycythemia and polyhydramnios. Since there's a lot of fluid available, the heart will have to overwork and this can be very dangerous. Question number five. Cord entanglement is likely to be a complication of which of the following twins? Option A, dichorionic diamniotic. Option B, monochorionic monoamniotic. Option C, monochorionic diamniotic. Option D, none of the above. The answer to this question is monochorionic monoamniotic. Cord entanglement is possible when the twins are close to each other. This is seen in monochorionic monoamniotic twins as there is very little space between them. This increases the chance of their cords to get entangled. This is not possible if the twins are in two separate amniotic sacs, so it's highly unlikely in diamniotic twins. That's about it for today's video. Let me know which question you found the hardest and which one was very easy. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.